I found a nice spot here in this Belgian forest and this is where I'm going to show you how to shoot a cinematic video of yourself. I'm going to show you a workflow that I use every time I don't have a plan or a storyboard and you can use this templates I guess for pretty much every cinematic video that you want to shoot. All you need is a camera and a tripod. Let's do it! See that? Every time I want to shoot a b-roll of myself, I get a pimple on my nose. <sighs> okay, so anyway, I came up with a little story that I want to shoot today. It's me riding down the road behind me on my bike. I'm gonna arrive at a spot where I see something. I'm gonna get off my bike, walk down the little path, and then I take a photo of something. I don't know what it is, a bird, whatever. And that's my little sequence. Now, whenever I don't have a plan or a storyboard, I find that the easiest way to tackle a sequence like that is to divide it in different parts. So in this case, the first part is riding down the road. The second part is arriving at the spot where I see something. The third part is walking down the path. And then the fourth part is taking a photo of something. So those four parts I need to make my sequence. And then it's really simple. Just shoot as many angles as possible of each sequence. So wide shots, medium shots and close up shots. So that later in the editing process, you have a wide range of shots that you can pick from and it will make everything a lot easier. Because right now I don't know yet what I want it to look like. So I need a lot of shots. I already did some shots. I did some wide shots of me riding down the road here behind me. Also some medium shots and a close up of my bike when I pass by. What I want to do now is some creative shots. Wait. Hi, it's me, future Yoris. I'm sorry to interrupt, but past Forest Joris forgot to mention a few things like camera settings and lenses. I guess he was too busy. Or lazy. Not sure. Anyway, so <laughs> the lens was a 17 to 28 mm f2.8 with an ND filter. Now, is that important? No, it's not. You can use any camera and any lens you want. Whatever you have. Even a smartphone will work. And then the rest of the settings? also nothing special. Maybe one important thing is that I shot everything in 24 frames per second, so no slow motion, because I think slow motion is a bit overused these days and I really wanted to shoot this sequence and I will show you the finished edited result at the end of the video. But yeah, I really wanted to shoot this sequence without slow motion, so 24 frames per second. And then one more thing, what's the difficulty whenever you're shooting a b-roll of yourself by yourself? Right, camera movement. Now, you could make a whole sequence with just static tripod shots, but if you get a little bit creative, then you can use that same tripod to get some really cool moving shots of yourself. And that's also what I did. I put my camera on a tripod, not this one, I used my big tripod. You could use a short one like this, but then your range will be limited, you know? But anyway, so I put my camera on a tripod, held it upside down while I was riding a bike, and I think I managed to get some really cool shots. Check it out, whoa. Okay, so I set up my little behind the scenes camera here so that you can see all the action. Let's give it a try. I'm not sure if this is dangerous or not. I might lose a camera today, but hey, everything for that one great shot, right? Let's give it a try. <laughs> Okay, so I'm not sure what that's gonna look like. I hope it's gonna look really cool because, well, it was not necessarily dangerous, but it was very difficult because the tripod with the camera and then stretching your arm, it's pretty damn heavy. So I hope it's steady enough to get a good shot. The next part of the video of the cinematic sequence, it's gonna be here. I don't know if you can see it right there. So I'm gonna arrive at the end or at the beginning of the path over there drop my bike on the ground and then walk down the path. But the arriving is the second part. I'm gonna do a few wide shots and a medium shot. And then I have again one creative, special, maybe dangerous shot again. Not sure. But first I'm gonna do the easy, simple, medium and wide shots. The last 
last shot I want to do for this second part of the sequence is a creative one, maybe again a dangerous one, I don't know. The idea is to put my camera on the gorilla pod here and when I drop my bike I want that, that triangle of the, the frame, I want that to go over the camera so that the bike falls over the camera and then I'm gonna step over the camera. I don't know, now that I'm explaining it, we'll see. That one I'm uh, why is my nose running? <laughs> that one I'm not so sure. It didn't look that good when I was watching on the little screen, but I have to check it at home. Um, the next shot, the next part of the sequence, the third part is walking down the little path. So this is a very simple one. I'm gonna do I think three shots. Um, a wide one from the back, then a medium one from the side and one again with camera movement. I'm gonna put my camera on the tripod, hold it upside down and then just take it when I walk down the path. And then I have a little bit of movement in the shot. The shots of me walking down the path were pretty easy, simple, nothing too special about it. Maybe just that one shot of me holding the tripod while I was walking make sure to put stabilization on if you have it because yeah it's heavy and you start shaking a little bit if you have stabilization we'll make it look a lot better now the last part of the sequence the fourth part is when I arrive at this open spot I kneel down take my camera open it because it's a Polaroid and then I take a photo of something so again same principle same concept same game plan get as many angles as possible. I'm gonna do a wide shot of me arriving, a medium shot, then a few close-ups of the Polaroid, opening the Polaroid camera, and then a close-up of my face when I take the camera to my face and take a photo. So get as many angles as possible. It will be a lot easier when you start editing. Okay, so I think I have enough shots now. I'm going back to the studio, I'm gonna edit it, and this is the result. Okay, that's it guys. Did you like it? I really like the result. I mean, I shot that sequence in two, two and a half hours and I think it turned out great. So whenever you're shooting a cinematic video, a cinematic sequence, a cinematic b-roll, you can use that same workflow. First, divide your story or your sequence in smaller parts. Then shoot each part from different angles, wide shots, medium shots and close-ups. And then once you have all these shots, then try to sneak in a few unexpected moving shots or just I sorry Bleh. or just get creative you know and if it doesn't work then it doesn't work but at least try it and i'm gonna stop talking now because you need to get out and go shoot something thank you so much for watching and as always i'll see you yes you in the next one